Hey guys, welcome back to Shrishti Tech Academy. In today's video, let us discuss about 30 annotations that are used with Spring Data JPA. Let us get started. At entity, a class annotated with at entity becomes an entity. This class will be converted into a table in the database. The table name will be same as that of the entity name. At table, if you want to give a different table name, Use a table annotation. It takes name as an attribute. Together with that, you are supposed to provide the value. Add column. Whenever you want to provide different column details. Let me show it to you. Here I have my book class, which is annotated with at entity. This means the table that will be generated automatically will be same as that of the entity class name. The table name will be book. If I want to give a different table name, I need to use a table annotation together with the name of the table. If this annotation is used, my table name will be book underscore details. The next annotation is at column. Whenever you want to provide different column details, then you need to use this annotation. As in, you want to give a different name for your column or change the length of your column or to check whether this column is updatable, whether it will accept null values. All these attributes are available with this column annotation. Let me show it to you. Comma. Let me give control space. Insertable. By default, it is true. It means this column can accept values. Name. Nullable. By default, it is true. It means it can accept null values. If you don't want a particular column not to accept null values, you need to change it to false. Similarly, you have got precision, scale, table, unique, updatable. So, these are the properties that are relevant to SQL. That can be added to your entity class using at column annotation. The next annotation is at ID. This marks a particular property as primary key. Then, at generated value. Whenever you want to auto increment the ID, use at generated value. It will automatically create a sequence with the model class name underscore SCQ. That will be the sequence name. The next one is at sequence generator. The sequence generator will work together with generated value. Use at sequence generator. If you want to have your sequence, start with a specific initial value and an increment value. Let me show it to you. These are the three annotations that we have added for book ID. At ID, which marks the property as a primary key. So, in our case, book ID is the primary key. We have added at generated value. This means the primary key will be automatically incremented. But what is the initial value? What should be the name? And what is the increment? That can be provided using at sequence generator. If you have not given anything, by default, the sequence name will be book underscore SEQ. That is the entity name underscore SEQ. But now, we have explicitly used a sequence generator to provide the name for the sequence, the initial value and the allocation size. Allocation size is nothing but increment. And what is the name of the sequence generator? Book underscore gen. And who is going to increment it? That is the generated value. It uses this book underscore gen which is the name of the sequence generator and it is using the strategy. The strategy is of four types, auto, identity, table and sequence. If you use auto based on your database, automatically it will generate the sequence and it will work accordingly. Okay, we will move on to the next annotation. Add transient. If this annotation is added above a property, that particular property will not be saved to the database table. At lob, this is used for storing large text and binary large object. That is for clob and blob. At enumerated, this is used for storing enum as a string in the database. As in, in your table, you are having a particular property which can accept only a fixed set of values. That is file type. Read, write, read, write. These are the three values that will be accepted for a particular column in the database table. So, when you are passing the value, you need to pass it as an enum and in the database, it will be stored as a string value. At repository, this is used to mark a class as JPA repository. 
whenever you are integrating your spring application with the database there are different ways of doing it you can either use spring jdbc module or spring data jpa if you are using spring jdbc module you need to create an interface which will behave like a repository you need to create an implementation class of that particular interface the implementation class of the repository layer should be annotated with at repository then this will behave like a jpa repository okay so if you notice the first nine annotations are relevant to the entity class the last annotation is relevant to a class that implements the interface in the repository layer next at query this is used for providing a custom query or native query this can be added above any method in the repository interface at modifying whenever you are using your own native queries like update or delete then together with the query annotation you need to add at modifying from wherever you are calling this particular method that method should be annotated with at transactional as in in the service layer so let us see these three annotations together a method annotated with at query takes jpql or it takes native query in this case it is jpql in this case it is native query next a method annotated with at query if the sql is update or delete query we need to add one more annotation that is at modifying from wherever we are calling this method that method should be annotated with at transactional meaning to say that we as developers are taking care of the transaction declaratively so from my book service impl i am calling this update book method so this method should be annotated with at transactional see i am calling this update book method let me control click so this is the method so whenever you are working with native update or delete query it should be added within query annotation together with that we need to add at modifying and from wherever you are calling this query that should be annotated with at transactional we will move on to the next annotation at named query at named queries at named native query at named native queries all these annotations are added in the entity class above the class whenever you are having a query that has to be called repetitively rather than adding it in the repository layer using at query annotation you can add it in the entity class using at named query which takes two attributes one is the query and the other one is the name for that particular query now in the repository layer you can call that query using the name of the query let me show it to you this is my entity class above this entity class i have added at named query at named queries at named native query what is at named query it takes two attributes here the query takes the jpql and we are providing a name for this query get by cat auth in the repository we need to call the query by the name of the query we are not providing the jpql but we are calling it by the name of the query similarly we are having named queries in case of named queries we have multiple named query so if i am having multiple queries i don't have to write named query again and again rather i can embed all the named query inside named queries each one is having its own name and the appropriate jpql so how do you call it in the repository call these queries just to by the name let me show it to you get by title get by title and category you don't have to provide the jpql it is enough you call the named query by using the name of the query and then we are having named native query what is the difference in case of named query we use jpql in case of named native query we will use normal sql query and how do you call it as usual by the name of the query here i have got get all and it is getting called by the name of the query since this is a native query you need to add the next attribute native query equal to true okay this is about named query named queries named native query named native queries the next annotation is at param 
whenever you want to map the query parameter with the method parameter use at param annotation let me show you an example this is the use of at param annotation this is used for mapping the query param with our method parameter the query param is author that is passed with an at param annotation and it is mapped to the method parameter next at one to one one to many many to one many to many all these come under association mapping one to one one product can have one feature that is where feature class can have material length dimension type size and so on one product can have many offers one to many many to one many products can belong to one brand many to many one product can belong to many category one category can have many products so all these come under association mapping at join table whenever you are working with many to many we need to use at join table annotation this is to avoid creation of multiple junction tables let me show it to you this is my product entity class which has got list of categories that is one product can come under many categories let me click on category one category can have a list of products so both the properties are annotated with at many to many when you do this four tables will be generated one is product table the other one is category table the third one is product underscore category which will have product id and category id and the fourth one is category underscore product table which will also have category id and product id it means the last two tables are similar we don't need both the tables just we need one single intermediate or junction table to do that we have to use at join table annotation provide the table name and specify what are the columns that you need for this particular junction table okay next at join column annotation this can be used with at one to one and one to many when you are using at join column with one to one it is used for providing a different column name when you are using at join column with one to many it is used to prevent the junction table that will be created let me show it to you one product can have one feature in features i have got certain properties color material description you can add length dimension size and so on so one product will have a set of features we have added at one to one annotation above this together with this we have added at join column annotation if i don't add this the features id will be added to the product table but the column name will be features underscore features underscore id to avoid a lengthy name and to give a proper column name we are using at join column annotation next with one to many one product can have a list of offers this is my offers class with few properties that is offer type offer description and so on now here also we have added at join column annotation if we don't add join column annotation three tables will be created one is for product one is for offers the other one will be a junction table product underscore offers which will have product id and offers id i don't want a separate junction or intermediate table i want the product id to be added to the offers table to do that we are using at join column annotation so now automatically this product id will be added to the offers table that is on the many side remember always the id will be added on the many side the next annotation created by this annotation is used to automatically capture the user details who has created the record this is used for auditing purpose next is at element collection this is used to store a set of values let's say you are working in an application like book my show where your entity classes movie this movie can have many properties one such property is language language is not one single value but it can be a set of values tamil english bengali malayalam kannada and so on genre it can be drama thriller comedy action so one property can have a set of values we cannot use any of the association mapping in that case we can use element collection together with element collection we will be using one more annotation called collection table 
to store these values in a separate table. Let me show you. In case of product, I have added two properties, which is of type list of string, delivery type and payment modes. In case of delivery type, it is free, prime and standard. This property should be annotated with at element collection. We cannot add all these values in the product table. Automatically a separate table will be generated. I want to give a proper name for this particular table. So we can use at collection table annotation where the table name will be delivery and the column name will be product ID value will be free prime and standard. Similarly for the next one also I have got list of string payment modes which can be UPA, cash on delivery, credit card, debit card. I have annotated it with that element collection. If I don't use that collection table, automatically a junction table will be created where the name will be product underscore payment. I want to give my own table name. That is why I have used that collection table. Okay. Next, at embeddable, at embedded. These two annotations are used together with component mapping. In case of component mapping, in terms of Java, you will have multiple classes. Only one single class will be annotated with entity. Suppose if I am having employee and address, employee class will be annotated with at entity. And address class will be a part of employee. So address class will be annotated with at embeddable. And in terms of the database table, because employee class is annotated with entity, you will have only one single table and address will be a part of this employee table. That is the properties of address also will become columns in the employee table. Let me show you with an example. This is my employee class. My employee class is annotated with at entity. And this is my address class. My address class is annotated with at embeddable. It means this is not an entity. This will not be saved as a separate table in the database. Address should be a part of employee. So we have added at embeddable annotation above the class. In the employee class, I have added address as property. Above the address, I have added at embedded. It means employee class has address as a property. All the properties of address will be added here automatically. Meaning to say that the employee table will have employee name, salary, employee ID and all the properties of address as columns. In our case, we are having city. City will be added as a column in the employee table. This is called as component mapping. I will repeat in case of component mapping in terms of Java you will have two different classes. Only one class will be annotated with at entity. The other class will be annotated with at embeddable. It means it can be embedded to any other class. In our case address is annotated with at embeddable. So it can be added to employee class. It can be added to student. It can be added to booking and so on. That address should be added as a property to the employee class. When you are adding it, you need to add one more annotation which is embedded. That's what we have added. Okay. The next annotation is at embedded ID. Whenever you want to work with composite primary key, use at embedded ID annotation. Okay. I hope it is clear. We have seen totally 30 annotations that are used very often with Spring Data JPA. The first two pages, whatever we have seen, are used very often. The last part, maybe you might not be familiar with these things, embeddable, embedded and embedded ID. They are used very rarely, only in terms of you don't want to maintain separate tables, you need to use these kind of annotations. Okay guys, I hope it is clear. If I have missed any of the annotations, please do share it in the comments. I will be really happy to see that. In one other video, we will discuss about the annotations of Spring REST API. That's it. Thank you.